Hey guys, Stealth here. Today in World of Warships, the Atago is going up against a lot of the enemy fleet, and you're going to be seeing me doing all sorts of weird stuff that the cruiser was not really designed for. The map that I'm on is, of course, a hotspot. It's the domination version. We have three different capture zones, whereas Bravo is, of course, the most difficult to capture. A and C are usually heavily fought over, and we only have two destroyers, one towards the middle and one towards C. The team consists of mostly battleships as usual, a few destroyers and a couple of cruisers to fill up the team. Now, the thing is that these battleships are pretty slow. The New Mexico is not known for its speed. 21, 22 knots and a whole lot of waiting is going to get you to the battle and not much else. And I have one of those guys behind me here, Apollo, and for the rest of it, uh, Agnisenau, as well as a Nagato. Also have a Prince Eugen here, and the Mahan is off to my right. That's the destroyer that you see over here. The other fleet is outside of visual range, and I don't know exactly which one is which. It doesn't really matter, so long as I know what teammates I have around me. Now, being a fast cruiser, with a decent concealment level, I decide to push forward in order to start capturing A. I might not be able to get it, but I can at least contest it. And, you know, never, you know sorry, never know. Maybe they don't push in one of their destroyers anyway. With a detectability of 10.4, I can get there uh, both fast and mostly concealed. The thing is, what's going to happen when I get there? That is going to be the real question. Because the enemy does have some pretty nasty ships coming at me. And especially a Hatsuharu can put a lot of torpedoes in the water. So I have to be careful. There is, fortunately, a little area where you can park your ship. Which is pretty much around this island. You're going to see me take a position there. Where you can still park your ship and not be taking fire from the enemy just yet. So, moving up. Uh, for some reason, the destroyer is requesting fire support well as I am further up ahead, but whatever. So long as that Mahan can come up and support me with torpedoes, then I'd be very happy with that. Been detected by an enemy aircraft. There's no aircraft carriers, so these are the spotter planes from some of these cruisers and battleships. And here's Bismarck, already at 8 clicks out. So he's pretty damn close. New Mexico, 9.5. I'm putting the ship into full reverse to slow down as fast as possible. And there's a tier 6 US aircraft overhead. So there has to be, and there it is, another cruiser nearby of the US model. A Cleveland. There's a Messerschmitt of tier 8. Presumably the uh, fighter that is going with the Hipper or the Bismarck. I think it's going to be the Bismarck. Torpedoes to starboard. Looking for torpedo solution, but although the Atago has some really, really good angles, they're not that good. I cannot fire torpedoes pretty much straight over my bow. So I'm backing up, holding position here, and that's when the Cleveland starts to contest A as well. So, no further capture points awarded. The Mayhan fires off a couple of torpedoes. They do seem to be going more or less for the Cleveland, but he is in pretty much the same position as I am. He's concealed by the island itself. The New Mexico there, not so much, but the Mayhan's torpedoes don't have fantastic range. So it's really going to be a question of if they can get there, rather than uh, what they will hit. The New Mexico, at 5.5 kilometers, seems to be pushing directly forward. So I'm trying to turn the ship by making an aft port turn. And by hoping to do this, or by doing this, I hope to get my torpedo launchers onto a solution so that I can fire them at the approaching battleship. Because the last thing I need is a battleship right in front of me. Especially when I'm broadside on like this. So I fire the first salvo. And you can see the dotted line over here. That's saying that that is the next solution that I can get. Because the other torpedo set is slightly off to my aft. Slightly off to the stern of the ship. One torpedo slams into the island. I start to take fire. Fortunately, the hipper misses. He could have done a lot of damage. The New Mexico seems to be utterly unaware of me. He was going for the destroyer. Suddenly he sees a whole lot of torpedoes and gunfire coming for him. And this guy is in a lot of trouble. 
He takes two of my torpedoes. He's down to 20,000 hit points. He might be flooding. I'm not exactly sure. But I don't believe so. I think that he fixed all of the torpedo damage just after he got hit. Now, unfortunately, all of my battleships, who I was hoping for support, were not in a good position to support me. One there, one there, and one over there. Now, the worst part of it is, the New Mexico is hanging back. The New Mexico is not accurate, it's not fast, and the only real way that I found the New Mexico to work is if it stays close, if it pushes in. That thing is a brawler, and yes, it may come up against a tier 8 battleship, but for now, this New Mexico has the right idea, although he's being a bit too aggressive. And he is starting to reverse. He takes another torpedo, presumably from the Mayhan, off to the right. Try to put him on fire. It seems he's already burning. And there is not really any good way out for him. So the torpedo goes in and takes him out. First kill. I take quite a bit of return fire, probably from the Hipper. Lose a bit of hit points, but fortunately the Otago comes equipped with a repair team as currently the only tier 8 cruiser that can do that. So I'm encouraging my team to say, go get A. Guys, come on, we can do this. We just have enough ships here. Move up. I even say please, but these guys are just not interested in pushing up whatsoever. The Gneisenau and the New Mexico, both, as far as I'm concerned, brawler type battleships, both of them not interested at all in moving forward. I fire off a couple more torpedoes. Unfortunately, my starboard launchers are still rearming from the initial strike. So instead, try to lob a few shells over the island. Lead wasn't really that good, but still 2k damage done. The Bismarck is pushing in very, very aggressively. I have a look at the torpedoes. Torpedoes are probably not going to hit anything. So I try to turn around. The Bismarck is not armed with torpedoes. It is, however, armed with a lot of secondaries. And depending on the type of build that this Bismarck has gone for, he could have a lot of secondaries, or he could be focusing on the main guns. But the Bismarck has such an impressive array of secondaries that it's pretty safe to assume that most, if not all, Bismarcks are going to go for that heavy torpedo. Sorry, for that heavy secondary armament. My own torpedoes distracted me there. Fire the guns. I turn away as fast as possible because the Bismarck is not letting up and he does a lot of damage. Fortunately, not as much as it could have been because he probably could have citadeled me for even more damage and killed me off. Now you see all that fire coming in? Yeah, that's the secondaries. That's not even the main guns. That's the secondaries. The Bismarck is probably aware of what I was doing. So he is slowing down, attempting to turn away. But a few torpedoes will probably find the ship regardless. Our Mayhan is uh, a bit pissed off with the rest of the team. And as far as I'm concerned, rightly so. Because we still have a lot of battleships over here who are still not pushing in. Bismarck, fortunately, has been sunk. I don't have to worry about that anymore. But I am on fire for another 20 seconds. My rudder is out. And I am continuing to lose hit points. Again, I'm asking the battleships, guys, push up. It is just a Cleveland and a Hipper and a Fuso at long range. We can do this, but they're just not going for it. They are just not going for it. And while we are doing far better on the amount of surviving ships than they are, they have all the capture areas, giving them all the income that they need to just wait it out and win by default. So, once again, I make for A in order to capture it. If they're not going to do it, then I will. I still have torpedoes. They're almost all rearmed. My main guns are all available. Nothing has been knocked out. The ship is a bit blackened from all the impacts, but I still have 9,500 hit points left. And I really hope that I can take these guys on one at a time. First hipper who's down to about 5,000 hit points, and then the Cleveland. The Cleveland will cause me trouble, though. The Cleveland can put up a lot of fire, both in the sense of HE fire, as well as armor penetration rounds. 
and at short range they will absolutely devastate me. So I have to be really, really careful and basically hope that I can get the drop on them. So pushing forward and fortunately another element of our team is also pushing into C. So at least we have a bit more of a breathing space, hopefully. But we've also been losing ships. We're now only one ship ahead, which considering the circumstances is really, really problematic. Now there's the Hipper. He's turning more or less to the west. So I try to get one set of torpedoes off in the general direction and hoping that he continues to go on that way. But you can already see him turning, which is not really going to work out for him as the Prince Eugen behind me there takes him out. So that just leaves me with a Cleveland here, or so I was expecting. But there's a Colorado. The Colorado is going to cause me all sorts of issues. Because it's going to make it really, really difficult for me to go and push into this Cleveland into a broadside formation. Because if I do broadside on him, I'm also broadside to the Colorado. Which can really punish me for that. So I'm going to make a pretty much a destroyer run. And this poor soul was, was seemingly utterly unaware of what I was doing. I try to rush in, dump a few torpedoes. He is reversing. The right solution for him would be to move forward at full speed. He just doesn't do it. He just doesn't do it. And that's getting him killed. Next kill done. I'm down to 4,700 hit points. I have a Colorado at 9.5 click range. And my detection range, instead, if I'm not firing, is 10.4. <coughs> So, I have to increase the distance between the Colorado and myself and not fire in order to capture the A area here. Unfortunately, I only realized that a bit too late. He put me on fire. I put it out fast, although for the next 90 seconds, I hope I'm not going to be put on fire again. Range, 9.4. 9.5. 9.6. 9.7. Nine seven. He's not firing yet. He's probably still reloading. Now he's firing. He can still see me. Reversing further. He mis uh, misestimates the range to my ship. Misses all of his shots. 10.4 and I'm secure. I am no longer detected. Finally. So now I can more or less safely capture the A area. C is still heavily contested. There's still an enemy destroyer in that area. And <clears throat> now we can start to focus down the enemy surviving ships. The Fuso, the Colorado, and there is another battleship up ahead, the Scharnhorst. The Scharnhorst currently is at or near C. You can see him all the way over there in G9. He is going to be engaging with this cruiser. The cruiser does not particularly like that, being a Pensacola. So the Pensacola is not going to have a really good time against the Scharnhorst. I fire a couple of rounds into the Colorado, not really that well estimated, so they fall a bit short. My aim here is to put them on fire. I want to have more damage over time. The more damage over time I have, the greater the chances of sinking these ships. Because if we can put them on fire and get them to burn, they're going to be losing hit points consistently, while the enemy, or sorry, while my friendly battleships pound on them with the armor penetration rounds. Which, for me, at this range, are utterly ineffective. I'm only moving at half speed here. There we go, there's the fire. I'm only moving at half speed to give our battleships a chance to start pushing up. I don't want to be the frontline ship. Not with 4,500 hit points. And it seems to be working. Because the Colorado is going for the closest target, which currently is not me. So the other battleships, who are still doing quite alright on health. I mean, look at this Gneiss now for almost 50,000 hit points. He's doing very, very well. But that may have had something to do with the fact that he was behind the line the entire time. A couple more rounds going in. Um, the guy is still on fire, and I'm still getting damage from that fire. And he still has 15,500 hit points left, so we're not quite done yet. He uh, fires another salvo at me. Fortunately, everything misses. And that's when I notice a Fuso just camping out towards the south. So the aft batteries, the two aft batteries and the number three turret are going for the Fuso. And I just keep switching my fire. 
the bow batteries can go for the Colorado, the starboard slash aft batteries, or actually the uh, 3, 4 and 5 turret can go for the Fuso, which I put on fire. He's quick to put it out though, and talking about putting it out, the Colorado is no longer burning. Colorado once again fires a salvo onto me, which I believe to be the right choice, but once again does not get a hit. Fuso, still burning, is not quite able to put out the fire, and at this stage I am not angled enough to get my aft turrets to get a good shot on the target, unfortunately. And yeah, a bit more. Turn. There we go. The enemy's about to win. They have 370 points holding over us. We have still one more surviving ship than they do. I'm telling our battleships to focus fire on the Colorado while I continue to focus down the Fuso and try to keep this guy burning. Keep him losing hit points. He runs aground and I wasn't sure. So I fire all the batteries just a second after he runs aground. Big waste of fire. Big waste of firepower. Colorado down to 1700 hit points. Duking it out with the secondary battery from the Gneiss now. Gneiss fires again but the New Mexico finally gets the kill. Fuso no longer moon, um, docked onto the island. He's slowly reversing making him still a pretty easy target. So more shells go in, 2700 hit points, but I was hoping for a second fire. And this is when I realized that I should be going to Bravo instead. I take a salvo from the enemy Gneisen now, or what was it, a Scharnhorst? Yep, the enemy Scharnhorst. And he gets me. I was not expecting the enemy Scharnhorst over there. So he just took me out without too much difficulty, because I was pretty much a sitting duck. The Fuso gets taken out. And that only leaves the Scharnhorst and the Ognivoy on the enemy team. Our team is pushing forward, more or less. But Apollo is still capturing the zone, fortunately. With the Scharnhorst coming out on the wrong end. All of his guns are pointed at the wrong direction. So Apollo is trying to swing his turrets around. Or at least I believe so, but it's, an, uh, it's a US battleship. They turn really really slowly and he is managed or has managed to capture B so he can now freely move up again this is where we're gonna see a bit of battleship on battleship action it's four versus two with Desis over here in the Scharnhorst playing a monster game with five kills Kraken unleashed for him already and I don't even know what other kind of medals he's been getting and he is engaged with the New Mexico you can see some of his new secondary battery fire coming in. You may not be able to Citadella Scharnhorst, or at least it's not normal, but you can still do a lot of damage to him. And he's taking fire from every direction. Down to 4,000 hit points. Another salvo more or less clips the ship. He's on fire. Look at all the punishment that the ship is taking. New Mexico took out the Scharnhorst leaving him on just a sliver of health, 153. That's all he has left. So, four ships against one, but there's 90 seconds left. If we do not get the enemy destroyer killed, we lose. Simply because even with two zones under our control, we cannot get enough points. We cannot get the amount of points that we need to overpass the enemy team. Because we keep gaining 6 points every few seconds, and he keeps gaining 3. And with that, he has to go. But it's an Ognivoy. It's fast, it's going to be very maneuverable, and we only have 3 battleships who are in a reasonable position to fire. The Eugen is a bit out of position. I don't know what it's o doing over here. I think it took the long way around through A, maybe. And while it is, of course, a sniper cruiser, and I think it's done quite well for itself in the match that we just played, it's not really in a good position to go after the destroyer here. Meanwhile, I'm having a bit of a chat with the Desis guy in the Sharnhorst, congratulating him on the Kraken. 
Well played to him. Five kills is nothing to snicker at. The Gnais pushes forward almost in the C cap. 16 seconds left. I was hoping that if we get this battleship in here, he no longer gains points. But with 10 seconds, it doesn't matter. And they just win the match. Unfortunately, after all our work, they win. So yeah, that sucked. I think I did really, really well there. And I felt a bit let down by the battleships. I'm not one to start blaming others right away, but these battleships were just so passive that we weren't having the effect that we could have had. And even with all the encouragement, they still didn't push up. Fortunately, I was pretty well rewarded for my efforts. Of course, this is a premium cruiser, so it does help with the income. 138,000 damage done. A lot of fire damage among that. 6 torpedo hits and 85 main battery hits. The team score put me pretty nicely on top. And just have a look at, for example, Master 0815 in the Numex. Um, he was so far behind. He didn't really get that much damage done. And he just... Uh, he could have done so much better if he'd just done a bit more brawling and was not so afraid to take damage. I mean, that's what battleships are for, right? Taking the hits and then duking it out. It's not something that the Otago does very well. I mean, I can take damage in the Otago, but not that much. I don't have the armor. He does. Detailed report. 38,000 damage done to the Bismarck. Thank you, torpedoes. New Mexico, 31,000 damage done. The Cleveland that I did a shotgun torpedo run on, 23,000 damage. Fuso, 23. Colorado, 18. And the Hipper, only 2,000. When I lobbed a few shells over the island... And I think I got a hit on his stern. Note the fire damage. 44,000. It's quite a significant part of the damage that I was able to do. Also, 40,000 in torpedo launches, or in torpedo hits. Out of the 32 torpedoes that I launched, only 6 hit the target, but those 6 did a significant amount of damage. And as for credits and XP, I got 380,000 credits for that, so not a bad result. 3300 XP, and I was trading the commander, so you can see the Zulu flag and the dragon flag up on there for another 10,000 XP. If only this had been a win. I would have probably been getting, well, possibly double the amount of income. Have a look also at the Scharnhorst. 2464 base XP, 5 ship kills, and he played a very, very good match. I wonder how much in the sense of credits he got, but I wouldn't be afraid to say that that was probably half a million, possibly towards 600,000. So well done to Desis there, and I complimented him for it. So if you are driving a battleship, please let this video be a lesson to you. Cruisers can do a lot, but cruisers cannot win the match all by themselves. The battleships need to be aggressive. As a battleship player, you need to push forward and you need to help out the team by tanking the damage. That's what you do. You don't sit in the back and you snipe. It just doesn't work. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something from this video. Let me know what your thoughts are on the whole cruiser problem versus battleships not pushing up. And I look forward to seeing your comments down below. Thank you for watching. See you soon.